Critical Brew Curve Espresso. Uh, we are joined today by Mr. Brian Bonoy. Brian, thank you very much for joining today. I understand that you are currently on the I-40 or potentially on the I-40 in your truck. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. <laughs> thank you for having me. Well, sir, thank you very much for joining today. And again, this is the inaugural broadcast of Riders on Riders over at Triple Espresso. And before we get started, Brian, I just want to know, are you an indulger of a Triple Espresso? I'm sorry? Do you like Triple Espressos? Oh, I love espresso. I'm part Italian. What are you, what are you kidding me? <laughs> Crazy question, I know. So, well, yeah. so thank you for making the time this morning. And again, we really appreciate you coming on the first podcast that we're hosting today. Uh, you've written an outstanding book called Falling, Tor Falling Towards Redemption. Um, and I had a chance to kind of catch up and read it this week uh, and found the book to be not only very insightful, but also very enjoyable as well. Um, would you like to maybe take a few minutes and, and tell us about yourself, you know, where you're from? And, and more importantly, what kind of inspired you to write the book? And then we'll talk about, obviously, some other projects you have as well. Okay. Well, I'll try to give you the cadets version here. Uh, yeah, so I actually wrote the book 14 years ago. Uh, it was the start of my own personal spiritual uh, awakening, shall we say, uh, journey. Uh, I was raised uh, outside of Philadelphia. I was actually raised Mennonite. Uh, but I, yeah, but I ran away kicking and screaming from the church when I was about 16 years old and, uh, never, never came back until I was 36, uh, through a series of, I, I've worn a lot of career hats. I've been a professional chef, classically trained professional chef for 14 years. I worked at a Ford assembly plant in Norfolk, Virginia, making the F-150 truck for 11 years. Uh, after they closed the plant, I, uh, you know, I got used to that high income and trucking was about the closest thing I could get because I don't have a college degree. I'm just a, I've been a blue collar stiff all my, all my life since I was 14 years old. I started earning a paycheck since I was 14. So, uh, make a really long story short, uh, got married, uh, to, uh, uh, my now ex-wife. But uh, it uh, lasted 13 years and uh, relocated down to Georgia. Okay. And uh, I always, when I say that, I kind of have to chuckle at the uh, at the, the Devil Went Down to Georgia song. Yeah. Uh, because that actually opened up a door to uh, my spiritual journey and uh, also encountering realms that most people don't even want to talk about or yeah. let, uh, think about, let alone talk about. I, mm -hmm. I've had personal encounters about the angelic and demonic realms. Mm -hmm. And uh, was uh, my own guardian angel, Camuel, who mm -hmm. is actually an archangel, revealed himself to me and then bonded to me. So, nice. and uh, there's, I can't do anything about it. He's, he's part of me and I'm part of him. Uh, but just out of the blue, God, the way he does, he loves to, to, to do, uh, is he's like, I want you to write books i want you to, and the messaging that is contained in books but i want it to be done to attract to a more secular audience because it's being published by morgan james and actually the physical books launched this past tuesday or the okay. 12th okay. the ebooks e have been out since the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and uh morgan james is what's considered to be a clean publisher so you know no graphic violence no you know, over the top. It's not. It it's not going to read like uh, The Godfather or Goodfellas. But but it's a very, uh, good, very good Christian publishing house. Right. It's a good Christian publishing house. Yeah, but but we're 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 uh, officially it is classified as Christian paranormal or supernatural fiction. But okay. we're not marking it as that because a lot of people will just see that Christian label and they'll circumvent the Christian book section at Barnes and Noble to get around it because they're like, oh no, I would never pick up a Christian book. And they're going to miss the messaging because uh, it has the, the writings have core core message. Sorry. I was I was waiting for that. My, I have a 80 pound German Shepherd in my truck with me. No worries. Uh, it's, good yeah, it's just me and her out here. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's, it's the core message and there's several core messages that it's, it's more about the messaging for me than it is the book. The books are simply the uh, conduit, the vehicle, vehicle. pardon the pun. It's your platform. Yeah, right. your platform. Yeah. It's my platform. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I noticed in the book and I was reading early on to it and I wanted to ask you was uh, there was an earlier part of the book that talked a lot about the destructionness of Atlantis. 
and how you reference Atlantis and the Queen and everything, and the Queen was just a, a villainous person, you know, no heart, cold, you know, but people around her was emphasizing, you know, there is one true God, you know, there, there is a God, you know, there is the God Almighty to it. And then, of course, you know, the destruction of Atlantis and sort of the, the pain from that. But I was kind of asking you when I was reading that, did you kind of mirror that a little bit as the Roman Empire? comparing the Roman Empire's journey all the way up to Constantine to what you kind of wrote about with Atlantis, or did you really kind of see Atlantis as the, the evil of the earth of the time? No, actually, I saw Atlantis as a, as a factual place that existed eons ago. Okay. And uh, Camuel was kind of responsible for the destruction. Uh, he, that's, that's why he's been, he's not a fallen angel. But he was exiled to Earth because he disobeyed God. Yeah. God didn't want everybody to be wiped out. Right. Uh, Lilith, uh, in a book, I, it's, yes. it's uh, Lilith or, or Lilith. Uh, one of my encounters with the demonic realm was I had the very misfortune of having several encounters with Lilith. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very unpleasant. Yeah. Now you have to understand. You have to understand that even even demonic. These are these are beings, both angelic and demonic. These are beings from, and there, there's different levels of hierarchy. Right. Uh, very much mirror our, a human military right. system, where you have the top to the bottom. You have the generals to the, mm -hmm. the grunts, mm -hmm. right? The privates, uh, where the generals would be like your seraphim and cherubim, the, 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 the uh, fire. Right. Uh, it, and if you look at, if you look at like a later the Talmud, the oral tradition that is goes along with the Torah, the five first you know the five books of the Bible, first five books of the Bible, mm -hmm. you have the Talmud is the oral tradition that is taught along the, with the Torah, and this this goes back millennia in the Hebrew culture, mm -hmm. okay? Well, in in Kabbal uh, Kabbalistic mystical Hebrew text, Lilith is portrayed as Adam's first wife, right. and she refused to. She refused to even think of herself as equal with the human male. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of like fired for the position, and Eve was brought in. Now again, this is you know mystical, and you know you it's part of the culture, the ancient culture, and everything like that. But it's fascinating. It, you know, it's, it was, it's fascinating to think about this. It was the way, like this. the way you wrote it was interesting because I was like thinking about how, you know, the destruction of Atlantis, the way you wrote it. And then it kind of went into Cammy's modern life coming up and challenges that he had. And then, and I think towards the end of the book, I really enjoyed the whole idea of, you know, that there is always a journey to redemption. There is always a path. No, no path is perfect. But I think one thing yeah. that you mentioned in our, in our kind of our pre-call was you also talked about, you know, the next book and the book after that. And, and it, what's fascinating is that, you would think that somebody would reach a pinnacle in their in their journey to redemption. In other words, they reach the point is that I finally made it. But you, based on your writing, it didn't look like you really believed that. You really believe that it's an ongoing redemption. Your journey to redemption is going to keep going. And well, sure. I mean, that's I, I believe that. I mean, I mean, here we are. Here we are on, on the brink. The the evening before right. what Easter, Easter is all about, right? And and uh. And that, you know, but you know the human beings. I mean, we we you know we can't earn it ourselves. It's right. it's a gift of free salvation. We you know all have fallen short of the glory of God. We're all like filthy rags, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so <clears throat> it's not it's not like Eastern religions where it's a, you know, where you can, through good works and good works and you, you, you elevate and elevate and elevate, elevate. No, that doesn't, that's not, that's not really what I'm saying, but Camuel's, you have to remember an angel is a soldier. Angels are soldiers. It's really, very militaristic. At the end of the day, they're all soldiers. So he has a mission. He's been given a mission and this is an ongoing mission. And like the hook of the the hook of the book is, uh, instead of instead of going after evil and you know fallen angels to destroy them, these are fallen angels that have been granted grace, mercy, and forgiveness. So now his job, along with his light workers, is to protect them until they can make it without giving too much of the book away until until they can make it home. And of course, 
Lucifer is like, uh, oh, hell no. Yeah. You know, we're going to kill these traitors because to them, that's what they are. They're traitors. But you showed a good struggle. I'm not to give too much of the book away because I definitely want to leave right. a lot for people to, to kind of read in order because I think your book was amazing. Right. But I did like the I did like the part in which you had to where Cami uh, or Camille had to go through life's journey through different people, and I thought that was right. like I mean, to talk about a path of redemption. I mean, you have to go live how other people live. You have to go see where other people live, how people die, how people go to war, how people love, they hate, they have children, their grand grandfathers. You know, I think one point was he like a goat or something. No, no, he was a wolf or a werewolf at one point, I think. And when you see that, and then to say, what do you like at the end of all of that? And, and, and you think about people that talk about all the great things they have in life. You say, well, they do because they've seen other people. They've changed their eyes. And they said, you know what? I've watched people. I've seen people around me. I know you being a trucker, you're seeing everything. You're seeing America in front of you through your windshield every single sure. day. Well, all, all you have to look at, all people, I mean, people forget, and, and I'm human, I think it's human nature, is you hold, I mean, God help us, we, we hold <laughs> celebrities and sp sports, I don't, I certainly good. don't, I but celebrities and sports yeah. heroes he put up on a pedestal because they're somehow supernatural. Right. They may have supernatural abilities, not supernatural, mm -hmm. but they may have, I mean, they've been given gifts a for gift. a purpose. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, most of them use it for their own selfish means. But all you, all you have to do is look at the heroes of right. the Bible. Right. I mean, come on. David was an adulterer. He was a murderer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he, he was not a good husband and father. He sucked right. as a father and a husband. I mean, very badly, mm -hmm. right? So he was a he was an absentee father. He was an adulterer. He was a murderer. Uh, Paul, as Saul, would be classified as a serial killer. Yep. Now, Mary Magdalene was demon possessed, a drug addict, right. and a hooker. Right. And God takes these people. I mean, just fallen people broken people and he raises them up yeah, yeah exactly as is yeah. because he can use anybody or anything to fulfill his purpose and what is his purpose well ultimately mm -hmm. it's his glory right. because he deserves it mm -hmm. he alone deserves it he alone is that's another thing i get into is he the he she yes. okay shekinah mother yep. uh another real life experience of mine mm -hmm. is Waking up out of a deep REM sleep at oh dark thirty in the morning, mm -hmm. my ex wife laying next to me in bed, and the the the, the most beautiful scent of roses just overwhelming. Not sickening sweet perfume, but just the the most magnificent uh, glor. How, what is it, glorfunda? You know the most fragrant roses that you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. And I had already started down this road, my own spiritual journey, and I had been I had become a what I had been. I always used the word woke. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> ah, I, I had been awakened. I had been awakened. Yeah, an entirely different meaning. I had been awakened uh, to those realms. And I didn't articulate the question, but I asked in my mind because it was uh, the entity. I didn't know at that time. The entity was actually was obviously introducing itself, themselves. Mm -hmm. how, how could you take it any other way? Uh, because you'll know, I promise you, you'll know. I, I, I felt it. Mm -hmm. We're spiritual. Human beings are spiritual. It's not this. Another message. The finite cannot reflect the infinite. We are not this. Mm -hmm. We're not corporeal. Right. How, how could if if we're if and my opinion is it was an, a misinterpretation for whatever reason it's been allowed to be that way it's not you're not created in the image of god you're created within god yeah. and god is within you yeah. because if he's cre if he she getting back to shekinah mother i'm going off a couple different tangents here Please. but if they've created everything everything is with the same recipe right everything the entire universe is the same recipe it's the same it's the same materials right so how could we how could this how could this be the reflection of something that's not this? Mm -hmm. So we can't be this because this goes away after 80, 90, 100 years. Well, did, it's gone. You, you did write. The reason I, I appreciate your, your commentary like that is because as you read your book, the way that you articulated a lot of this description was done very, very well. 
And I know that you're currently now working on a second book. And, you know, I asked you in kind of our pre-call, you talked a little bit about being possibly a sequel, potentially not a sequel. But can you right. give a little bit of insight to what's the second book kind of leading down towards? And I know you also mentioned there's even a third one in the pipeline. But if you don't mind, take, take a few and talk a little bit about what the second book means to you. Because uh, I know everybody who wants to write a second book is inspired because of the first one. Well, what really kind of compelled you to want to do the second book? Well, to me, it was just uh, the. And again, I'm getting this from on high. I'm I've actually fully conceptualized up to eight or nine full full novels because what I do is I take they're set at different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I use that each part of the world, different parts of the world, different countries or regions. And I use that unique cultural mythology that's linked to that part of the world mm -hmm. to develop characters, both good and evil. Mm -hmm. So this one, this one, the first one is, pre is set again, not to give too much away, but the, the, only because I was in middle Georgia when I wrote it and I fell in love with coastal Georgia, Savannah and Tybee Island, St. Simons. So the first one, the, the painted lady, the, 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 the Victorian house uh, is in Savannah, and it's primarily set in Savannah. Mm -hmm. So the second one, of course, Savannah continues, but some of the characters have ancestries back to Imperial Russia and even further back, and then it goes into where the communists took over, sure. you know, and that sort of thing. And we have some in, in Lyon, France. So you have some Europe, but like, I have car I have car chase, you know, I have a car chase through the streets of St. Petersburg being chased with a black van full of uh, faceless demons, mm -hmm. faceless demons, another encounter of mine. Right. So in the in the book itself, I know you're, you're still kind of developing and doing the writing and working, you know, collaborative with people. But what's interesting yeah. is it's still going to have the same genre that you've created for yourself where it's, the, it's a Christianity, but it's also paranormal as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're all. It's all the same. Uh, they're all the same, and and we see the character of Camuel is is uh, developing and evolving, but actually also devolving at the same time. Okay. So there's. I'll uh, just to give you a little teaser. There's uh, some real, real problems and some real, some real conflicts within himself, uh, only because. He he's been sentenced to live as a as a human being for a thousand years, and my own archangel Camuel, when he first came to me, I had real I had real problems with that bonding because he had palpable disdain for humanity. Right. Yeah. He did of... not like he did not like people. <laughs> well, and that's which so, is weird. It, no, which, it's not weird. I mean, there's people yeah. in our in our world today that. Have to have the same kind of notion, right? They they don't like humanity, right. and they, they kind of go yeah. to their extremes as well. When you when well, you, one of the things that was interesting that I, I get a lot of requests, not even in my own writing, uh -huh. is what is it like to work with your publisher? What, what was it like when you went through the submission process and the editing processes and the cover design? By the way, your cover is amazing. And how did how did it happen from the moment you had your manuscript in your hand to finally when they finally made it to the print? What, what was that journey for you? Because publishers, I got it. We all get hit or misses. But what was yours like? Uh, it's been, it was a roller coaster. It was a roller coaster. And part, and part of it was because of financial. I couldn't. Uh, before I became an owner operator, I was just a company driver, and I just couldn't afford uh, some of the costs involved. And yeah. it was actually delayed. It was actually delayed almost a year. Yeah. But. In our timing, it was delayed. In his timing, it's perfect. Because look, it's been it's been released Easter week. It's mm -hmm. been released Easter week, and the, one of the core messages is redemption, forgiveness, mm -hmm. salvation. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, it's been actually Morgan James. That wasn't the cover I wanted. Really? I wanted something completely different. Oh yeah, I, I wanted something completely different that would blow you away. But I couldn't. I couldn't afford it. It's actually. It was actually. A, he's a photographer. He's a Polish photographer. Okay. And he works. Believe it or not, he works his mediums to work in is dairy products and paint. Okay. And he actually did. I can't think of his. It's uh, Yaroslav, Yaroslav, and he actually he actually did a calendar called Fallen Angels. Oh, how cool! And he captures. He stay. He does this elaborate stay. The the models are nude, but they're coated with 
I mean, he must do something to the milk because it's super thick and super creamy and stuff like that, or paint, right? Mm -hmm. And he captures the splash, wow. if you can believe it. And he does this elaborate. So he, uh, you could go on the website. It's uh, Aram, Aram Light. I think it's A R U M Light mm -hmm. Productions, something like that, something okay. like that. But he's he's Polish. Mm -hmm. But it just blew me away. But then we were getting in, we were having to talk about release of rights and everything. And we were talking like tens of thousands of dollars because yeah. Morgan James was talking like a half a million hits for the, for the images. And he's like, well, that is going to be like, to, and they're like, well, forget it. Then. You know? And I'm like, but I really want this cover because the way, the one image he had, he had the, he had the angel right. on one knee and the way he staged it was, it was, he was on a edge. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, he was, he was, and, and the image was, and, and the, the paint splash formed wings. <laughs> That's quite the picture. It was, it would have wow. been perfect. It would have been perfect. And everything was dripping off. And it was like, it was like his aura, his, his being was being stripped away as he was on the edge of heaven, getting ready to be cast out. And that was the cover. And he's oh, and he's like this, man. and he's like this, and his wings are, and everything's just melting, right. melting away from him. And I'm like, that's it, right. boom! Oh, wasn't it? So we had to start over, and the title we actually our very first meeting, which involved a Mr. David Hancock, who is the publisher, right. and he's like. He's like, well, let's talk about the title, and I'm like, okay, here it comes, because all I had was, I had was, it was, uh, falling towards with an S, oh, redemption. Falling toward. It and he's like, toward. David's, okay. David's like, well, I got a really big, I we're gonna have to make a big adjustment of the title, and I'm like, no, 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 I really like. It. He's just like, we just need to take the S off, and I'm like, okay. wait, what? That's fair. <laughs> he's like he's like i'm like i'm like that's it he's like no he's like that's it don't do anything else to it it's perfect <laughs> i'm like really <laughs> he's like no and he's like and i rarely say this he's like he's like all right that's done next <laughs> that is great. this so, is like normally yeah. we have a big we have a big fight about the title of the book and he's like this very rarely happens and i'm like okay <laughs> so when they, now how much yeah. editing i know a lot of people bring up the question upon like i'm i write but i have a, a proofreader i've got editors and things how was your editing journey how many edits did you have to go through before it became final you know what i could probably still i could probably go back into the manuscript and still find stuff <laughs> so, i'm the same right yeah right? No, i agree right yeah yeah, but I had I I mean I literally people have to understand I literally had never written a single thing in my life mm -hmm. before this book. Not a magazine, not a I mean English was my worst subject. Math, no problem. Mm -hmm. Science, piece of cake. English, forget about it. Right. It was the only time I had to do summer school was in seventh grade because of English. I couldn't, I couldn't de deconstruct a sentence or whatever, whatever. I couldn't do, oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, English was my worst. Mm -hmm. And I needed help. Mm -hmm. I needed help. And by the grace of God, I found this awesome editor. She's one of my LinkedIn contacts. Oh, back and forth, back and forth. I ended up hiring her. Oh, yeah. Uh, LinkedIn has been phenomenal for me. I, I have no literary agent. Mm -hmm. well, you and I, have I was brought in directly. I was brought in directly to Morgan James. Yeah. I was brought in directly to Morgan James by the acquisitions editor, mm -hmm. Terry Whalen, mm -hmm. who is another LinkedIn contact. You and I actually met through LinkedIn. That's how we got a chance to meet up. And then, uh, right, yeah. right. I think, yeah, I think LinkedIn is great. I hope people don't mess it up. Uh, they keep trying to like interject politics and everything. I'm like, come on guys, like it's a business site. Just take that <laughs> take that to Facebook, please. Leave it on Facebook. Somewhere somewhere. <laughs> so Yeah, go go somewhere with that mess, please. So you know so how can people, but, uh, how can people get your book? What's the best way to buy your book? How what's the best way that they can link up and find you? It, it's it's out on all your global links. So it's on Amazon and Walmart and Google Reads, Google Google Books and <laughs> Uh, Amazon is probably the easiest. It has both the Kindle version and the paperback now. So uh, I'm st I'm waiting for it's been released and not nationally in selected retail. Actually, Morgan James last week sent me a quickie email and they said it's starting to sell 
overseas and inter internationally in other countries. And I'm like, wow, we haven't even thought because that's part of the contract is later on, hopefully not too far later on, is the audio. Mm -hmm. uh, because I have, uh, I'm pointing at the Flying J because the the truck stops. They have whole separate standing kiosks yeah, for audio books. As you can imagine, you know, I mean, there's companies that do nothing but audio books. And I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, you got millions and millions and millions of truckers out there, you know, so that would be awesome. But, yeah, we haven't even talked about like, audio rights and uh, translation rights and everything. So, you, so, so a great point on the audio. So I'm actually doing an audio for my first one as well. And are you, right. Are you going yeah. to be your own voice? Are you going to be the voice or are you going to hire someone to be your voice? No, I would. And actually, my, my, actually my ex-wife, uh, one of her, she's actually a self-published author. She writes a different genre. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she's been writing for a long, long time. She's got like 11 or 13. She's been mm -hmm. like over uh, a decade. Mm -hmm. Her first book was actually a children's book. But uh, uh, yeah, she actually did. Uh, I'm going to have to remember to ask her. She actually found a gentleman that did one of her books, an audio book. And the guy was like phenomenal. I mean, he could just do different voices at at whim. You know, it was amazing. I mean, car, you know, voiceover actors, you know. So I think that's the way it would probably have to go. I mean, something like that. I, I mean, really. But it's crazy. I had like uh, uh, probably going, coming up on two years ago, two more LinkedIn contacts uh, uh, in, in, in Hollywood, in media. Uh, the one is actually a Paramount screenwriter. Mm -hmm. And he just came out of the blue one day. He's like, he is me. He's like, do you have do you have representation? I'm like, no, I don't have I don't even have a literary agent. I'm like, why, why? He's like, why? Or no, I said I said why, and he's like, well, because I read your manuscript. I'm like, well, how did you get my manuscript? I need to even send. Never mind. It's you know one of those friend of a friend of a friend because I sent out like hundreds. Right. I I queried like hundreds of literary agents and publishers and everything. Got all rejections except Morgan James. Mm -hmm. My only my only yes. All it takes is one, right? It's all, you know, no matter how many but, queries you send but, out, it all it takes is one publisher to say yes. Yeah, that's it. But he said, yeah, I read your manuscript. And I see, he said, it's it's got a really good potential for a book to film project. And I'm like, I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. You know, I think where he's going with it, and this is why it is, is interesting, because when you read the finish to your novel, not to give away the end, because I want people to buy your book and read it and enjoy it. Right. But you take people through such a journey that in everything you talked about, from the child's life in middle school to going the wrong way to coming back, there's every one of us can look at that in the mirror and say, I was 19, I did that, but now that I'm 58, I've managed to do all these other things. And, and I, I want to tell you that I think the, the one thing that really got away from your book that was probably the best was that there's hope for everybody. And, and, and there really is. That, that's one of the core. That's one of the core tech takeaways. In fact, I have it up here. I have it up here. You know, just to, it's like no matter your struggles, hope will find a way. And look at my tagline. There's you know, always hope. Look, look at the tagline of my coffee. You know, cycle rider, three espresso, bringing hope to the world. You know, one espresso at a time. Right. And but it means something to people to know that there's people out there that want people to have hope. And I think you gave people hope. In your book, and I want yeah. to thank you for what you wrote. It was very great. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate. I mean, we all. I mean, oh my God, this just this journey for myself. I mean, we all have peaks and valleys. We all have bad days. I'm like, you know, like we're like, look, don't don't tell me about hope, and I don't want to hear it. And you're like, okay, I get it because I've been there myself. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear all sunshine and ra rainbow and ponies and you know roses and stuff like that. Because right now, I feel like crap. Well, that's that's part of that's part of being human. That's part of being human. That's but part of being human. That. That's part of being human. But so, the difference the difference really is mm -hmm. this simple. Mm -hmm. Just like that, you know, Rocky. You know, it's like you know, hey, it doesn't matter how many times you get hit, and how many you know, you how many times you get up after being hit. You know, yeah. hey, well, that's that's what it really comes down to. Well, you're a true testimony of getting up, and I wanted to thank you for coming on today's first novel of the writers on Writers Over at Trick Espresso. And Brian, I hope you safe journeys. Happy Easter to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, oh, you too. Have you me on. Too. Let me Thank know you. when your second one's coming out. Love to have you back on again. And, and safe travel. That would be great. Thank you for making the show as well today. Thank you very much for having me and the opportunity. No worries. Great to see you. Thank you. Take care. Okay. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.